Hey guys, good evening to you all. So I am back to deliver this message. It is coming from a dream that I had a couple of days ago. I am moving in the order that the Lord wants me to move in uh, as it pertains to the dreams that I've been having. It's been a lot of them. And so I kind of got to just deliver them when he wants me to. And so this dream I had two days ago and I've been sitting on it. And when I came in today, I felt the Lord pressing me, just pressing, pressing, pressing. So I'm on. I'm here to deliver this message. I have a couple of scriptures he wants me to read. I'm going to share the dream. And then I'm going to share with you what he spoke to me concerning the dream. And I'm going to read the scriptures. And then that's going to be that. All right. So this is the dream. So in the dream, I was working with a doctor. Um... I knew in the dream that this doctor represented, represented God. So in the dream, there was like this big, beautiful garden and the garden was filled with all of these beautiful flowers. And I love flowers. I'm a flower woman. Um, and they were so beautiful. Every flower was so beautiful. And I'm just feeling the Lord all over me. Oh, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Y'all love it. I love it. So um, in the behind me, there was like a hospital. There was some type of hospital there, but then there was this big garden and the, you know, the garden was like the main thing that I really focused in on. And, and then there were like a whole lot of children that were inside of this garden and they were playing and all that kind of stuff. And there were like a couple of adults there and it was all of these children. And so me and the doctor were walking together, me and the Lord, we were walking together <clears throat> and as we were walking, the children would run up and they will hug him and they would say, oh, I love you. I love you. And give him hugs and kisses. And then they wanted to take pictures with him. And so he would go and take pictures with them. And then as they were doing this with him, they would come over to me and greet me the same way. Oh, I love you. I love you. And give me hugs and want to take pictures with me and give me kisses and all of that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, this is so sweet. I was like really taken back by it, you know, and just taken back by watching him interact with the children and how he stopped everything he was doing to show these children attention, um, to give them something that put a smile on their faces. And I was just sitting there just taking it in, watching it. And as he was getting all of that treatment, they begin to give me the same treatment. So as we're there with the children, we're smiling, we're talking, all these things are going on. There's a man over in the bus that's not that far from us. This bus had pulled up and there's a man inside the bus and the people are yelling and screaming. This man is having a heart attack. This man is having a heart attack. He's about to die in the dream. Okay. And I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that word. Well, whatever, because my page is not that large. And so I don't have to worry about that right now. I don't think you guys could let me know off in the comments, you know, if I got to worry about anything like that, but it's there now. So it's going to stay there. But anyway, I guess I should say the man was leaving out of here. Um, I can't think of any better way to say it. Leaving out of here could mean anything. Basically, he was checking out. How about that? He was checking out. He was part, he's about to be done. And he actually was done. So... As the children were having fun, we were having fun. It was like he wasn't rushing. The Lord wasn't rushing to run over, although he heard the yelling and the screaming and all of that kind of stuff. He wasn't rushing. He was still tending to the children and the people that were out in the garden. So finally he got up. They was like, the person has gone. The person is gone because he had literally had a heart attack. So then he says, follow me. And then I went onto the bus with him. He laid hands on the person and the person raised up and he says, I need you to do this. And then I woke up from the dream. <laughs> now, listen, guys, this is not the first time I've had a dream like this. I've had a dream like this. Oh, my gosh. I've dreamed something like this maybe um, in my early 20s. Oh my gosh. And I still remember or late, was it late or early late twenties? I had this dream, um, that I was inside of a school and inside of the school, 
uh, we were learning about uh, raising the dead, raising the dead. It was like a, a seminary school. So we were learning the Bible and all the different things that you learn in school. And um, somebody had literally checked out right in front of me. And I had brought them back to life in that dream. And um, so this is reminding me somewhat of this, but this was sort of different because at that time I was just in a school. At this particular time, I actually had a doctor working with me that represented God, that was supposed to be God. So uh, what the Lord is saying to somebody that the same treatment and the same things that people give to him those same treatments and things will also be given to us. The same type of care, the same type of attention, the same type of love, the same type of respect and support. And, you know, the way that people cherish him is the same type of way that people will also cherish us. OK, so it's not all the time that uh, we're going to be dealing with people. And I mean, we will be dealing with some really sick people. We will be dealing with don't get me wrong. We will be dealing with some really wicked people who do not want the best for us. We will be dealing with people who want to scam and want to break us down. We're going to be dealing with some people who are going to be trying to uh, steal from us. They're going to be trying to uh, do all kinds of evil things in order to try to take something from us that's not even theirs. It's not even theirs. But the point that the Lord was trying to show me in that dream was the same type of attention and the love and respect that he was getting is the same type that's coming to us. I walked in to my uh, local uh, restaurant in my area. This is not the first time. Oh God, he's giving me two instances. He wants me to talk about help. I was not trying to go here, guy. He just dropped it. I was not. I could have been talked about this. And he's like, no, I want to talk about it now. That's so wild. I could have been talked about this like last week. And he never put it in my spirit, but he wants me to talk about it. So I walked into a restaurant and there is a chef at this restaurant that absolutely adores me. Every time I come in, this chef is always making me special things, different things um, that he feels that I might like to eat. I might love to eat. So, oh, this is so good, guys. So I walked into this restaurant sometime way last week. I mean, it was, gosh, it might have been two weeks ago this happened. But I walked into this restaurant and the chef stopped everything. He had tickets. He had all of these things going. He had people being seated. He had all of these different things that were going on. And a few of the waitresses walked by and they was like, why does he always do this for you? <laughs> they were laughing. They was like, he does not do this for anybody that walks in this restaurant except for you. <laughs> God is too much right now. And I was like, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know why he likes me like that. They said, it's something special about you. And I said, okay. So he comes over, he says, what do you want to eat? And then so I told him, I said, I want this. I, you know, fix me this, fix me this. He says, I got you. So you got all these people in the restaurant waiting for their food. They're sitting there. Okay. They've been there before I was there, but he has made it his business to stop all of his tickets and fix my meal right there for me. So he fixed my meal and instead of a waitress or somebody bringing it to me, he brought it directly to me. He says, miss, enjoy, enjoy your meal today. And I said, thank you. I will. And then I walked out and I just had this like feeling like, God, that's amazing. Like that is amazing to have that type of treatment. And that's the type of treatment that children of God will be getting. That's the type of treatment. The same attention and affection and the way they waited on Jesus um, in the Bible is the same attention and affection that you will be getting, okay? And you will be having love from everywhere. You will be having love from the children. You will be having love for the older people, the, uh, you know, younger people. You'll be having love from everywhere when you are, you know, working with God. So whoever you are that's working closely with God, this is the treatment that the Lord is first saying he's going to give to you. Lots of you guys don't 
uh, see yourself as God seeing you as putting you first. And God wants you to know that he does see you and he does actually want you to, he, he's putting you first. He wants you to know that, you know, this is treatment that's well-deserved. So I had another incident. Um, the day before yesterday, I walked into a whole nother establishment where I am absolutely adored in there. Um, awesome, awesome business, awesome people. Um, it's just always good when I go in, everyone's always pulling on me, but they're always needing something like prayer or something. They want to talk about something or something's going on. And I happen to pop in. I'm always popping in and they say I pop in at the right time is what they say. Well, when I went in there that particular day, I wasn't feeling like all at my best. I was just a little bit, you know, in my mood, I was like, hmm, hmm, you know, like, you know, just tired of a lot of different things. Let's just, I'm just going to be real. Just tired of a lot of different things. Just annoyed. And I was like, God, you know, I'm tired. And I said that. I was like, I am really tired. And um, I walked into this establishment. When I walked in, first person greeted me. Can I get you something? Now, I wasn't paying for anything. And she loves me. She's like, girl, what do you want? I'm going to get you this. I'm going to get you that. And she gave me stuff I didn't even ask for. So I asked for one thing, but then she gave me other stuff I didn't ask for. So then as I go to the opposite end of the establishment, uh, they begin to ask me, what do you want? We want to get you something. Can we get you something? Can I get you your favorite? Can I get you whatever you want? Um, several people. Okay. All at once, which doesn't generally happen where in this particular establishment where everybody all at once is just asking me, what do I need? So in that moment, I had a couple of people come over and we were hugging and I was like, I ain't really feeling at my best today. And they looked kind of shocked about it. And so the young lady asked me, you know, she told me she was going through something and I completely turned off everything on the inside of me shut down. Mm. Everything on the inside of me shut down immediately and I began to pray for her. So as we started to pray, we're praying, we're praying, we're binding, rebuking, um, uh, uh, speaking blessings over her, blessings over her day, blessings over her job. I'm speaking blessings over the other young lady that's starting a new job, blessings over her workplace protection, all that kind of stuff. We could feel the presence of God in there. It was powerful. And it was a gentleman behind us that was like, oh my gosh, I need some of that. So I was just like, just giving all of this away. And then when I walked out, I heard the Holy Spirit say, notice how you felt when you dived into what I called you to do. Notice what I did before you could even speak. I was already sending people to be a blessing to you. That's where it started at. So when you decided that you weren't even going to think about yourself, even though they had started initiating what I told them to do to bring you all of these things. Okay. Because God is in the business of blessing. He's in the business of blessing. And there is no child of his that's just going to be suffering out here, despite what the enemy wants to see. He wants to see a lot of us down and out. He wants to see a lot of us give up. He wants to uh, see a lot of us just say the heck with everything that God has called us to do. This stuff ain't worth it. All this warfare, all this witchcraft, all these ugly acting individuals. I don't want to do none of this. He doesn't. He wants us to say those things. He really does. And the Lord does not want for us to lose hope. He wants for us to continue to believe in Believe, believing in him that what he has spoken will happen. So he'll start to do these things to show you that he is with you, that he is still with you, that he is still for you. Okay. That you have his favor. And if you're walking with God, and as I was walking with him in this dream, as he was talking with the children and interacting with the few adults that was there, as I was there, the same treatment he got I received. Okay. So that explains that. So while all of that was going on, the man on the bus had the heart attack and he left. So it took him a while to get up. It took him a while, a lot like the uh, one where the, uh, who was it? Was it the man's or was it Lazarus? I think that died. And then he came later after he was already gone. Okay. That's what it was almost like. Like he was not in a rush for this man. So he got up 
we went over to the bus and he looked at me like, follow me, follow and watch what I'm doing. See what I'm doing. So I followed him onto the bus and he laid hands on the person who was out of here and the man rose up. Okay. And he said, I expect for you to do this. So let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. God is raising up people uh, to do certain things. This is what he's doing. He's raising us up because he needs for people to be healed. He needs for people to be delivered. He needs for us to perform miracles because in performing these miracles, that's going to draw the masses to him, not to us, but to him. Now they're going to come to us. Okay. Because they're going to be thinking it's something we've done, but then we're going to turn them to him so that he can get the glory and so that people's lives can be transformed and changed and so that they can understand that it's nothing that we're doing. It's the Lord working through us. That's this. Um, I'm getting tongue tied. That's the reason why these miracles and these things are taking place. Okay. So y'all pretty much can figure out. Um, I basically explained to you, uh, what both of those dreams may, uh, met. I gave you examples as to what God was speaking and what he was saying directly to me uh, as in reference to uh, what type of treatment children of God are going to get. Okay, so there are going to be people that are going to be trying to withhold things from you, blessings and things that you're supposed to have. And God is saying he's going to send it another way. Mm. I don't know who that word is for. But you better take it and run. You better take it and praise God. You better take it and go to the roof, to the moon and back praising God. Okay. He is saying that there are people who have been withholding for a very long time. Okay. You're giving out all of this stuff. You're giving out all of this goodness, this kindness, this prayer, this love. You're sowing. You're doing all of these wonderful things. And these people are literally on your back on your back trying to keep you from coming into what God wants you to come into. And God is saying, it's not going to happen. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter how many of them come against you. It doesn't matter how many groups, how many people, what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter who they try to get to replace you. There is no replacement. God said he called you, whoever you are to do certain things. And he wants for us to get it done. Okay, and that's what he's saying. He wants for us to get it done. He's called us to do certain things and it doesn't matter who tries to come up against us to stop us. He expects for us to get everything done that he has called us to do. Okay, you gotta let these people say whatever the heck they wanna say. They're not God. I don't care who these people, for me, I don't care. Because a lot of these people are gonna do a lot of talking uh, through uh, different things and trying to get at you it's not going to work. Okay. When well, you're solid in God, what these people are doing, it will not work. It will not stick. Now here's one of the scriptures that the Lord has for you guys this evening. Philippians 4 and 13. I'm reading from the Amplified version and it reads, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Okay, so that's the first one. So you could do all things. You could do all things through Christ. He's the one that's going to strengthen. He's going to empower you to fulfill what his purpose is for your life. Okay, you're going to find everything you need in him. It's not going to be outside of yourself. It's going to be in him. Okay. Um, and that's what he wants for somebody to know right there. Now, let me find this other scripture. God is so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I've been gone all day. I dropped my son off uh, at his competition or uh, to go to his competition. And um, I've been dress shopping for my daughter's homecoming. And um, just been busy taking care of a lot of things. Um, and it's been a busy day. I came in today and the Lord just said, now is the time. Right now is the time. And so here I am. 
here I am. And all I know is God is good. It doesn't matter what the enemy tries to do. It just doesn't matter. Okay. We, you know, later for the games, later for the games, it's time for people to rise up and stay where whatever position God placed you in. It's not a position from man. It is a position from God. Remember that. It is not a position. It's not something that the world called you to. It's not something that they would call you to. They're going to call who they want to call. But when you're called by God, it's something different. Okay, you answer to God. You move how God wants you to move. You do as what pleases God, not what pleases everybody else. Because if you're pleasing God, everybody else is going to be okay. Whether they like what God has called you to or not, they will in fact be okay because they're going to be people who are going to receive from you and they're going to be some people who are not going to receive from you. And regardless of what they do, regardless of what they do, the only thing you can do is do what God called you to do. It's not your job to do what other people is doing. It's your job to do what you've been doing. Whatever God called you to do, it's your job to do that. It's your job to walk in faith. It's your job to believe. It's your job to encourage yourself. It's your job to strengthen yourself. It's your job to do whatever God called you to do. It doesn't matter how many people. Doesn't matter how many people mock you, how many people try to be you, how many people try to copy you. It does not matter because God has called you to do something. You're getting graded for what he called you to do. You can't worry about what all these other people are doing. Because it's a bunch of confusion and all of that. Um, and it's there to get you to really take your attention off of what the big picture is. And the big picture is souls. Mm. Souls. There are souls that are waiting for whatever it is that God has placed in you guys. Whatever that is. Okay, and if you're wasting your time on other stuff, you're not going to be available to fully commit and give yourself wholeheartedly to what God has called you into doing. So I don't know who that's for, but that's that. John 14 and 26 is the very last scripture and it reads, but the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit whom the father will send in my name in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. He, and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. So it's the Holy spirit. It's the Holy spirit. That's going to teach you all things. Okay. It's nothing that you can't go to God and ask him to help you with that. He will not help you with. Whatever you need, you can go to God and he will give it to you. Okay. So that's a two, a twofold type of a dream, but it wasn't even long, but it was like a twofold dream. Uh, God was tending to, you know, making everyone feel good and they were making him feel good. It was like a give and take, give and take. And while the giving and taking was going on, I being the person who was there, you know, I guess I was the uh, student. I, the, the person that was standing there was also receiving the same types of things that he was receiving. Okay. Because I was a part of him because I am part of him. Okay. So expect God to do good things for you. I don't care what the devil lying about. The devil can go straight to you nowhere. Okay, he can go to the lake of fire and burn forever because that's where he's going. Okay, don't you ever let somebody get up here online or offline in your family, in the street, some complete stranger try to uh, punk you out of what God told you he wanted you to do. Don't you ever let people do that to you because these people will try it. They will try to take you away from what God wants you to do. And what they don't realize is this ain't even about us. This is about God. This is about God. This should be about God getting the glory. And God can get the glory out of anybody's life, including a child. Including a child. And that's why I don't put my confidence in Man, I don't put my confidence in people because if you put too much confidence in them, people are going to break you down. They're going to break you down. If you give them that, if you give them all of that, they're going to totally wipe you out. 
Put your confidence in God. Lean on God. Rest in God. Know that God has your back. Know that if you are walking with God, you're going to have that present, uh, presidential treatment. You're going to have that first class treatment walking with God. Oh, God is good. You're going to have that first class treatment. Because God treats his, his children don't get scraps. Okay, his children are going to get scraps. You're going to get that first class treatment at any cost. So when somebody is trying to make you feel that, and then God go out of his way and show you, oh, I don't need them to do anything. I'm going to do it. Understand where your blessings come from. Your blessings are coming from God. So no matter who God chooses to use as a vehicle to bless your life, I don't care where it comes from. You have to remember that God had to first put that on that person's heart to be a blessing to you. That was God. Okay, he had to put it in that person's spirit to be a blessing to you before they acted on it and, and, and actually did it. And there's a lot of people that are, are going to actually miss out on certain things, blessings, their own breakthroughs. They're going to be missing out on everything. You know why they're going to miss it? They're going to miss it because the way they treated y'all. They're going to miss it because the way they treated y'all. You cannot treat children of God like trash and then believe somewhere in your mind you're going to be blessed. You're not going to be blessed. You're going to be cursed. You cannot curse true children of God and think that you're going to be walking in a blessing. You're not. You're not going to be working in a blessing. The Lord says you're cursed. You cannot uh, get a person treats you well and then you decide, I'm going to treat you bad because that's wicked. That's evil. That is not of God. And you need to repent. That is not of God. So, I don't know who this message is for, but it's done. It's done and I feel great. I feel great. God is good. Y'all understand God is with you. He's going to be doing more than one thing. He's going to be showing you more than one thing. You're going to have your hands in many different things. But whatever you're doing for God is going to be blessed. As long as it's being done for God, it's going to be blessed. As long as it's being done for God, you, it may come with some tribulation. It may come with some hardships. It may come with some hate. It may come with some ugliness. It may come with years of you just pu pushing, pushing, and people are people trying to block you and stop you. But I'm telling you, those who do not give up, those who refuse to give up are those that will win. Those that will win are those who refuse to give up. No matter how un, uh, uh, undertreated you are by some people, forget them people. Forget them people because God got people on standby ready to bless you. And they want to bless you. Because you are a child of God. You're not a child of Satan. You are a child of God. That's why they're going to bless you. Mm, 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 mm. So guys, on that note, I'm gone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. God is all up on my hands right now. He is all up and through here, all over my body. Y'all, God is so good. I will catch you guys on the next message. Take care. God bless.